Hi there. If you're like me, whenever you've been on vacation, you probably take photos with either phone or with a camera that does not have a whole lot of features. In my case, I've got a smartphone. And it acts a lot like a point and shoot. So, in other words, it's got an automatic light meter, it's got automatic settings, it's automatic everything. And usually that turns out okay. But every once in a while, you've got this photo that, well, maybe you wanted something else other than what the camera decided to be the main subject. Case in point, this photo. As you can probably see, I've got some foliage that was picked up by the light meter. This image was taken early in the morning, and the particular exhibit was mostly in shadow. And down here in shadow, if you can see it in the video, are some flamingos. Now, I would really like to be able to see the flamingos in this image. So, if you've had just a tiny bit of experience with Photoshop or some other image editor, first, the novices are probably going to brightness and contrast, and they're getting something where you can see some of the things, but not really, and you've blown out the highlights on the foliage. Some of you that are a little less novice are probably thinking, ah, oh, well, I'll avoid that. I'm going to use levels. And, as you can probably see, not only have we blown the highlights up here, but we have this cast to it that's not quite completely black. And we've blown the highlights again. Some of you that are a little less novice are going to go to curves. And you're going to bring up the mid-tones here bring up some of the low levels here. And this looks better than levels, but we've still blown the highlights up here. So let's hit cancel. Now, what am I going to suggest you're going to do? Well, some of you that are even less novice on Photoshop are going to suggest using, you're, you're probably raising your hands and you're going, ooh, ooh, I know. Use an adjustment layer. Well, unfortunately, the GIMP doesn't have adjustment layers. And there's another trick I want to show you how to do before I do anything that even vaguely looks like adjustment layers anyway. So let's get right to that. There is a way to improve contrast in images that is probably one of the better methods I've run into over the years. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the layer. And I'm going to go into Colors and Invert. And then I'm going to go back into Colors and hit Desaturate. And I'm going to leave that on Lightness. And then I'm going to switch the Layers mode to Overlay. And you can probably already tell there's a little bit of an improvement, but it looks a little odd. So, let's improve that. I'm going to go over to Filters, then Blur, then Gaussian Blur. Now first, I'm going to try doing an extremely wide radius, or at least what I think is an extremely wide radius. What we're wanting to do is we're wanting to build a mask that has more or less the level details of the image in reverse, so that the things that are bright are not going to be brightened by the overlay, but the things that are dark are going to be very bright. So I'm going to start with a radius of about 100. And you can probably tell we've had an improvement in contrast, but to my eye, what I'm noticing is something that I would say is, looks more or less like a bad HDR effect. I'm going to switch our mode from overlay back to normal for a second so you can see what, what we're doing here. See, these, these areas that were all in dark are now very light, very white. And these areas up here that are in light are a little bit darker. Play. And then I'm going to go to my history here. And go back to this. Set layer mode. I'm going to go to blur and Gaussian blur again. And I'm going to go more than double this time. I'm going to go to 250. And hit OK. Now this to me looks a lot better. But the only thing I'm going to do before we go on to the next step is, to me, the effect doesn't look overbearing. 
on a lot of photos that I do, I'll set the layer mode, or the layer opacity rather, to somewhere around 30%, maybe 20%. On this one, uh, let's say about 80%. Okay, so this does look better, but I think we can do even better. Now, as I mentioned before, for you Photoshop fanatics that have been looking at this going, ooh, 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 use an adjustment layer, use the layer mask. Well, I'm going to show you what we're going to have to do instead. I'm going to go to the edit menu, and I'm going to go to copy visible. That's also shift control C. Then I'm going to go back to the edit menu and scroll down to paste as. And under, under Paste As, I'm going to select New Layer. And as you can probably see, we have a new layer that represents what we've done so far. And now, I'm going to go to Layer and add a layer mask. Now, looking at the image, I think we can get away with using just a, just a gradient. And my foreground color is black, my background color is white. I've got a gradient here that says the blend mode is normal, shape is linear, and it goes from foreground to background. Now, for this to work the way I want it to, I don't want this top part of the image to really change in value, but I do want the bottom part. So I want this part up here to be black in the layer mask. And I want this part down here to be white so that it does change. So I'm gonna start right about here drag down to right about here. Now I'm going to go to Colors. I, by the way, I went over here and selected the actual image because if you have, if you leave this layer mask selected, you're not going to change the values of the image, you're going to change the values of the mask, which is not what you want. So, I have selected the image, I go to Colors, curves. I'm going to drag those mid-ranges up like we did earlier. And a little bit more. Maybe bring it over here so that we're not clipping the high levels. And hit OK. OK. So now we end up with an image where we can see the foliage in the background that was all in light. We can see our flamingos. And we can see these lovely tourists. I have no idea who these people are, but I'm sure they're lovely people. Okay, now I'm gonna try one more thing. I do not promise it's gonna work, but it is a trick that you need to know if you're working with Photoshop, and especially if you're working with the GIMP, and you might be frustrated that you don't have all the techniques available to you that would be available to you in Photoshop. I'm going to hit Copy Visible again, and I'm going to do paste as new layer. And I'm going to go back to filters, enhance, and this time I'm going to select unsharp mask. And you might be wondering, why on earth are you, are you selecting unsharp mask? Well, what I'm going to do is a very old trick. If you don't know how unsharp mask works, this probably doesn't make any sense, but what the way unsharp mask works is that on the edges of regions that go from light to dark, it will decrease the level of things that are in the dark and increase the levels of things that are in the light. So that makes it look like it's more sharp by increasing the contrast between those zones. We can exploit that same principle by using an extremely wide radius. In this case, I'm going to select about 112 maybe. And then I'm going to do an amount, and the amount works different than it does under Photoshop. Eh, let's do a really low amount. We'll do about 10. And there we are. We have a little bit more contrast to the image. I will pick 
that down to show you that there is a little bit of a difference. I might, if I was doing it again, take it down just a little bit more because I'm not happy with how it has blown out highlights on the flamingos a little. But all in all, I think it looks pretty good. Now, here's with Unsharp Mask. Here's with Selective Curves. Here it is with our Overlay Mask. And here's the original image.